Today we're gonna show you three techniques that will help you climbing no matter your level. Toe pointing, quiet feet, and straight up. Let's do it. Go. Yeah. When I say we're gonna show you, I mean mostly one. <laughs> So one of the first techniques we're gonna go over, as Bill mentioned, is something called front pointing. Uh, front pointing is literally when you're gonna take the front of your climbing shoe and you're gonna point it towards the wall. This will help you understand how to better use a climbing shoe. And uh, as you progress in your climbing, it will also help you make use of smaller and smaller footholds. Uh, one of the best ways to do that, we're gonna just go ahead and jump on the wall. And what I'm gonna have Bill do is demonstrate what a common way to climb in when you're, is when you're first starting out, which is to have your feet sideways. All right, go ahead and pop off the wall. Now, we're not saying that, that, that you should never do that. We're just saying that uh, learning how to front point will add a little bit more versatility to the climbing. There may be a time when you're going to need to sidestep like Bill was doing, but generally that's kind of limiting to climb in that way entirely. So what we're gonna do instead is I'm gonna have Bill demonstrate just pointing the front of the shoe towards the wall. We don't hop onto this yet, just like that. So what we're doing here is we're just taking the front of the shoe and pointing it towards the wall. That's what we call it, a front point. And in this way, we can make use of uh, a lot of surface area on this hold. We can also add pivots. And later on, when the footholds get smaller, our mind can conceive of using something smaller because we're used to using smaller surface area of the shoe to be able to stand on a hold. And so now what that looks like when we wanna put that into motion is I'm gonna have Bill go ahead and jump up on the wall. Both feet are front pointed, and then he's just gonna make sideways progress to practice front pointing on every foothold that he touches. So it doesn't matter if the foothold is big or small, the sole purpose of the exercise is just to make sure that the front of the shoe is pointing towards the wall. And should Bill accidentally sidestep on a hold, then what I would do here is just say, pause for a second, Bill, let's take this foot, turn it over into a front point, and then go ahead and continue on from there. All right, pause right there for a second, go ahead and hop off the wall. Now, if we start to look at some of these benefits, if you look at a big hold like this, if Bill was to take his foot and approach that from a sidestep perspective, right? You know, what he's done here is he's taken up all the surface area that that hold has available for use. What happens now is if he tries to match feet or put two feet on the same hold, there's no more room. And so then that's going to make the next movement be kind of awkward or kind of choppy. But if Bill learns to front point, now he creates enough space where he can then match a foothold and then move on to the next hold. There we go. That's just one of the many benefits to front point. <clears throat> Cool. Nice work. Thanks, Juan. Yeah, there's another technique that we're gonna use, which is, uh, we call it, I guess in the industry, we call it ninja feet. Um, but really what it is, is to build precision in your footwork. We call it ninja feet because the way that you practice the exercise is you're gonna try to make zero noise when you step on footholds. When you're forced to make zero noise on the footholds, what that helps you do is really kind of focus in, so almost hyper-focus on the foot that you, or the, excuse me, the foothold that you intend to step on and because you're not trying not to make any noise, then it allows you to precisely uh, pick the point at which you want to touch down and then make use of that foothold. For added benefit, what we're gonna do here to make sure that Jen uh, is relying on footwork to move across the wall is we're gonna take the ability to use hands to pull across the wall away. What we're gonna do is gonna give her these tennis balls and she is going to be able to put these on the wall on any part of the surface that she wants to move around but she can't actually grab onto any footholds. This way she's gonna learn about weight transfer from one foothold to the other, and then the added bonus there is gonna be quiet footwork, which is gonna help build her precision. So Jen, I'm gonna give you these guys here, and then uh, I'm actually gonna have you start over here. And so you can put those tennis balls on any flat surface that you want to... And start moving? Yep, so let's go ahead and put the tennis balls on there first. There we go. Now, as you approach your first foothold, you're gonna to try to make it as silent as possible. Once you've done that, then you're going to go ahead and wait the foothold, and then you choose the direction that you want to move in. Okay. And we are just making sure that every foothold is approached as quietly as possible. Now again, because she's not able to use her hands to pull on any of the holds, she really has to rely only on the footwork in order to get from point A to point B. And if you notice, Jen is also front pointing, which is giving her the ability to potentially match on a foothold and continue to make space to continue moving, you know, in one direction or the other. Okay. 
Excellent work. Nice job, Jen. Thanks so much. Thanks, Juan. <laughs> Great. And so you can see that's the way that you can have one technique filled on the next. So we started with front pointing. Now we added some precision footwork in that by taking away the ability to pull on hands and quieting down the feet. <clears throat> and then the last skill that we're going to talk about is something to do with the upper body. And for this part of the uh, for this part of the class, we're actually going to move around to a different side of the boulder. Come with me. And we're going to get rid of these guys. There's one, and there's two. And we're going to hand the camera off. For our last tech tip, Bill had mentioned straight arm climbing. And this is a technique that we use in order to preserve some of the upper body energy uh, for times when we really need it. One of the most common things that you'll see climbers do when they hop up on the wall is they'll go ahead and jump on. And the first thing they do is pull everything in close like this. Uh, there's certainly one way to climb and again we're not saying that you should completely cut that out of your climbing but it's not the most efficient way to spend energy uh, when you're kind of in this position what we call the t-rex position uh, what it really is doing is it's locking off this arm and so then when you need to let go of one arm or the other you're dipping into that precious bicep energy in order to get from point a to point b there's another way to do that where you can kind of straighten out your arms and put more of the weight on your legs and you can use your core and your hips to push you in the direction that you want to go. That promotes a style of climbing that has you kind of pushing your way along the wall versus pulling your way along the wall, which can come in handy for when you're trying to preserve energy. So, Aaron, you're gonna help me out with this one. So, one of the things I want you to do is go ahead and jump up on the wall. Let's go left foot, right foot, and match hands, so two hands on the gray hold. And then what I'd like you to do is go ahead and walk off in that T-Rex position. And then if you just let go with your left hand, you can see that right now you're having to use all this energy right here in order to be able to stay on the wall. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> what we're gonna do instead is go ahead and go back to that T-Rex position. And then what I want you to do is kind of sink down and straighten out your arms. There you go. And get a little closer into the wall so your weight is actually over your feet. And straighten out those arms all the way, all the way. There you go. Now what we're gonna do is, we're going to move over to touch this hold right here, but what I want you to do is use your right foot to push you over to the left. And this arm is going to stay nice and straight. Oh, let's try it without bending this arm. Let me demonstrate for you one time. I reach that That's okay. Let me demonstrate one time. Right, you show me. The Santa suit is a requirement, right? What's that? Santa suit is a requirement yes. for this exercise? Yeah. So from this position right here, uh -huh. right, instead of kind of pulling up and trying to go over, what we're going to do is just use this right leg to push us in that direction. Okay. See that? Yeah. So we don't necessarily have to pull up to go over. What we're going to do is just take this leg and we're just going to push in this direction. Yeah. Like grab this hold up. Okay. That makes sense straight on. Let's try that. <laughs> That's it, right there. A little closer. There we go. Nice job. Let's try going in the other direction now. So go back to center. Okay. Sink down a little bit more, and this time use the left leg to push you to the right. <laughs> Beautiful work. Nice job. Come back to center. Try going back to the left again. Nice work. Come back to center, and let's go to the right one more time. Very good. See, and that's a good way to and use the lower body to get you to where you're going. And then that way, if you really do need the upper body energy somewhere down the line, it'll be there for you to use. One of the other things that it can do is also improve your reach. So for example, let's go ahead and get back up into that T-Rex position. And I want you to lock off, right? And let go of the right hand. And without leaning in any direction, just see how far out you can reach. So let's pan around over this way. And we can see that Aaron can just about touch that blue hold right there. Right? Okay, go ahead and sink down. So instead of T-Rex, we're an orangutan. And now what you're gonna do is use the left leg to push you out in this direction. And now let's see how far you can reach. Much, much farther. So yeah, before you were only touching to here. You're using your leg and straightening out that arm, you can reach clear over to here. There you go. And that's a good way, again, like I said, to conserve energy, increase reach, and just overall improve your climbing endurance. Right? Thank you. Awesome, high five. So just remember those are three different tips as my friend Bill mentioned at the beginning of the lesson that you can use for uh, You know really for for any type of climber beginner intermediate or advanced 
Uh, you're going to want to front point to make better use of footholds. Uh, you're going to want to use the footwork, or excuse me, precision footwork. That's going to kind of help with the flow of your climbing and it's going to avoid uh, readjustments that can kind of throw stutters in your pattern. And then you're going to want to straighten out your arms whenever possible to conserve the upper body energy. Thank you. Um, so I'm Jen Zellin, and I'm a co-founder at Rock Haven, and we're located at 355 Northeast 223rd Avenue, Kitty Corner from the West Village Admire. Cool. Thanks, Jen. I'm Bill Ryder, one of the founders also, and uh, this is Rock Haven. That's all I got. I don't know. Do I, do I need to say something else? Okay, I'm gonna, can we cut that? I'll wrap it up from here. Okay. <laughs> My yeah. name is Juan, and I help develop the programs for Rock Haven, and uh, welcome to our bouldering gym. There we go. So I'm going to just start that over. Three, two, one. <laughs> <laughs> That'll go to the blooper reel. Okay. Okay, for. I am down. I what my name is. That's good. Yep. All right, Jen, you going to start us off? Okay, who's actually saying the address part, though? Oh, yeah, are we saying like address? You can. One of us would say sure. it. You should do that. I'll screw it up. Where are we? The bigger. Yeah, like, wait, so the co-founders don't know where they are. That's a problem. <laughs> Great. Okay. Yeah. Like, what were you gonna say? Co-founder. Okay. Yeah. All right. Tell or one of the founders. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. oh fantastic. <laughs>